again, I apologize. Uh, these millennial um, Reign of Christ videos ended up being quite a bit of information. This is going to be part th uh, part three C. So hopefully the final installment of part three we'll see. I'm pretty sure. Um, please follow along if you're enjoying these things. I really am glad because this is all worth it. We're going to talk about Eden-like conditions as seen from expanded longevity, health, and happiness. The improvements in the physical longevity, health, and general well-being of human beings during the millennium will likewise be extraordinary, along with all the other blessings we've talked about in previous videos. And we may take Scripture's focus on Israel in these respects as a result more of its concern with the fulfillment of the promises to the Jewish people than as any indication that the rest of the millennial world will be left out. We may expect that these effects will be most pronounced in Jerusalem proper and in Israel in general, but the whole testimony of Scripture taken together seems to suggest that disease, poverty, and even death to some great degree will be removed as serious concerns worldwide under the blessings of the Messiah's glorious rule. Here's Isaiah 29:18. In that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see. Isaiah 35, 5 through 6. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute shout uh, the mute tongue shout for joy. Isaiah 33:24. No one living in Zion will say I am ill and the sins of those who dwell there will be forgiven. The passage is immediately above is informative the passage immediately above is informative one is an informative one regarding uh, one of the more controversial aspects of the, of the millennium, namely the question of whether or not human lifespans will expand to their remarkable pre-flood pre lengths or even beyond. To put it more directly, will anyone die in the millennium? Isaiah 65, 22 through 23. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will live long and enjoy their, the work of their hands. They will not toil in vain to bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a blessed people by the Lord, and they and their descendants with them. Zechariah 8.4 This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with cane in hand because of his age. Here is Isaiah 65.19-20 I will rejoice over Jerusalem and be filled with the joy of my people. The sound of weeping and the cries of distress will no longer be heard in her. No longer will there be any infant that perishes in his youth, nor any old man who fails to live out his days in full. For a man will be counted but a youth should he die at a hundred, even a sinner a hundred years old who suffers this curse. This last passage in particular is sometimes taken to mean that no one will die of natural causes during the millennium. But verse 21 contains an important caveat even the sinner a hundred years old who suffers this curse. In other words, uh, they will, all, will even so be accounted to have died early if, it, if they, they, they pop off at a hundred. Given, the, the, given that n the near millennial long life spans were indeed common before the Great Flood, see Genesis 5 for that description, and outside of the Garden of Eden at that, it is certainly not impossible that with the restoration of Eden-like conditions on earth, we should expect even greater physical resilience and health under the perfect conditions of the reign of Jesus Christ, the Genesis curse on the earth being finally removed as well. However, Isaiah 65:20, quoted above, does state that death will occasionally occur nonetheless and, indicate, and indicates that the key factor bringing, bringing it on will be sin. After all, even in pre-flood days, people did die, and it is well to consider that these exceptionally long lives recorded in Genesis chapter 5 apply to believers of exceptional spirituality. In Isaiah 33, 24, also quoted above, we are told that illness will be absent in Zion, for the sins of those who dwell there will be forgiven. Thus we may conclude that spirituality versus carnality will be a determinant factor in this regard. For as Isaiah 65, 19 says, it is the sinner who dies at a hundred who will be thought so accursed. Zechariah 13.11 On that day a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Um, as the above verse suggests, the life-giving waters which emanate from the temple in Jerusalem, that's from Ezekiel 47.1-11, Joel 3.18, and Zechariah 14.8 once again, 
giving rise to medicinal trees which spring up along its banks, uh, that's Ezekiel 47, 12, would seem to not only have healing properties, but also the power of spiritual cleansing from the physical side effects of sin. We may thus indeed expect believers who are walking in the Lord to live exceptionally long lives with even the possibility of reaching through the entire millennium not to be discounted. On the other hand, we may expect those who are, in addition to being unbelievers, spiritually reprobate sinners to have their lifespans curtailed as a result. Even so, as Isaiah 65, 19-20 suggests, their lives will be long by contemporary standards. Between the two extremes, that is, between essential righteousness and inveterate immortality, immorality, rather, there will be no doubt. Uh, there will not, no doubt be many points along the scale, with a variety of lifespans resulting. We may also expect a number of deaths as punishment for criminal activity to occur during the millennium, under the Messiah's perfect administration of justice, wherein there will be a zero tolerance policy when it comes to crime. There are some passages of which point to the possibility of death from natural causes, as in Ezekiel 46, eight, uh, 16 through 18, where regulations are given to the prince concerning the assignment of inheritance, which could, however, be alternately explained. Um, we should also recall that the last, that the least, that at the least, the original millennial seed stock will come from human beings who have lived a portion, and in some cases a great portion, of their lives under far less than ideal conditions most recently the seven-year tribulation. Uh, it seems best to conclude, therefore, that people probably will still die during the millennium in spite of great increased health and longevity. After all, even in the case of uncommonly responsive believers, everyone not yet resurrected will still have a sin nature. Finally, there is also the question of the disposition of believers who die during the millennium, whether from natural causes or from crime or accidents. Even if these are unusual occurrences or possibly even especially so, it seems out of place for these individuals to be thenceforth excluded from the millennial kingdom, and we find no indication in scripture that they uh, will find themselves in the third heaven from the duration of the millennium, a place which, though by far not unpleasant, will now otherwise be empty of other saved human beings, because they've all returned. It seems much better to suppose that in such cases either such individuals will be uh, resuscitated immediately, as in the case of murder, or, two, given an interim body so as to enjoy our Lord's presence, precisely as is the case today with all departed believers, with the main difference in the millennial regime being that they will enjoy the presence here on earth rather than in the third heaven as our departed brethren are currently doing. Whether this is a congregation in Jerusalem, we still don't know just yet, but that is the most likely outcome. Let's talk about the Eden-like conditions as seen from expanding population. In addition to the vast destruction of Armageddon, and along with the purging out of Jews who, still, who though regathered, still refused to accept Jesus as the Messiah, uh, the, fifth, the fifth judgment that occurs during, well, there's a series actually of seven of them, and I've talked about these in previous videos. Um, he, my teacher calls them the seven thunder judgments. They rapidly occur uh, right as the Lord returns. The fifth one happens to be... Um, it's the punishment uh, with destruction of all unbelievers who took the mark of the beast. It's basically their death sentence. And that most likely constitutes the majority of tribulational survivors. Taken in conjunction with the enormous loss of life for many other reasons during the tribulation, therefore, it is virtually certain that the millennium will begin with a very small population relative to the current seven or so billion beings who inhabit planet Earth, a population which could very well be pushing some 10 billion at the time of the tribulation's commencement. Things are speeding up a little bit right now. But even if this figure be reduced to 1%, and we are told that mankind will become rare as gold of Ophir as a result of the tribulational judgments, that's from Isaiah 13, 12, by the way, also alluded to in Isaiah 24, 6, Zephaniah 1, 2 through 3, and Micah 7, 13, the remaining 100 million survi survivors under the conditions of the millennial uh, blessings and enjoying expanded human lifespans would certainly uh, rebound, rebound to the previous levels in a very short order and to surpass it significantly by the millennium's end, most likely if there's no famine or death or disease or any of that stuff. That is no doubt true even if the figure of 100 million survivors turns out to be far too high. This would also seem to be born out of the rapid expansion of both pre -flood hum the pre-flood human population, which began with only two after all, 
and of the population after the flood from a seed stock of eight, Noah and family, both under submillennial conditions, starting with what must be at very least some millions more than this, judging from the fact that we who remain in 1 Thessalonians 4 is a sizable enough category to deserve mention, and that the regathering of Jews from around the world at this time is one of the most prominently emphasized scriptural prophecies, even this small seed stock will no doubt prove more than sufficient to surpass current population levels in very little time, so that by the time the final events of, of the millennium's uh, end, those who will oppose the Lord will be as numerous as the sands of the seashore, Revelation 28. The place where this expansion of population uh, will be most pronounced is within the land of Israel, though. Isaiah 9.3 says this, Jeremiah 33.10-13, and Ezekiel 36, 13 through 15. And with the expanded borders, it seems reasonable that could be uh, easily housed. Isaiah 49, 19 through 20. Though you were ruined and made desolate and your land laid waste, now you will be too small for your own people, and those who devoured you will be far away. The children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, This place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. Isaiah 54, 2 through 3. Rejoice, O barren woman who has never borne a child. Break forth with rejoicing and shout for joy, O woman who has never given birth. For the children of the desolate woman will be more than those of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let your tent's curtains stretch wide and don't hold back. Lengthen your ropes and strengthen your stakes. For you will burst forth on the right and on your left. Your offspring will possess the nations and the, si and the deserted cities will be inhabited. Isaiah 66:22. The least of you will become a thousand, the small a mighty nation. I am the Lord. It is, my, it is time I will do this swiftly. Jeremiah 23, 3. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where I had driven them and will bring them back to their pastures where they will be fruitful and increase in number. Jeremiah 30, 18 through 19. This is what the Lord said. says, I will restore the fortunes of Jacob, tents, Jacob's tents and have compassion on, the, on his dwellings. The cities will be rebuilt on her ruins, and the, and the palace will stand in its proper place. From them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers, and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Here is Ezekiel 38, 8-12. But of you, O mountains of Israel, will produce branches and fruit for my people Israel, for they will, so they will soon come home. I am concerned for you and will look on you with favor. You will be plowed and sown, and I will multiply the number of people upon you. Even the whole house of Israel, the towns will be inhabited and ruins rebuilt. I will increase the number of men and animals upon you, and they will be fruitful and become numerous. I will settle people on you as in the past and will make you prosper more than before. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I will cause people, I will cause people, my people Israel, to walk upon you. They will possess you, and you will be their inheritance. You will never again deprive them of their children. Here is Ezekiel 36, 37 through 18. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Once again, I will yield to the, yield to the plea of the house of Israel and do, them, do this for them. I will make their people as numerous as sheep, as numerous as the flocks, for offering at Jerusalem during her appointed feasts. So will the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. That is going to conclude part 3C. Um, we'll start talking about the spiritual blessings next. Again, I'm sorry for misjudging uh, the amount of information, but it is imperative that we get a broad picture so as to understand. There's a reason he wrote it down, so there's a good reason for us to study it. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, I am, again... I'm sorry for messing that up, but I'm really glad to be able to get this out because this is stuff we should be thinking about. This is wonderful things to be looking ahead to. Talk to you soon, guys.